Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. All right, I want you to go with me real quick to Acts chapter 1 in verse 8. And I know that we've all read this verse a million times, but I want you to, uh, to, to look at it with a different lens tonight. Is that okay? Because we've all read this so many times. It says, but you will receive. Everybody say receive. receive. And isn't that the most difficult thing to do is to receive? Like, you know, someone is trying to give you an encouragement. And when you're feeling down, it's hard to receive that. And so you can't receive something unless the Father gives you the capacity to receive it to begin with. You just can't. And so many of us are trying to receive peace. We're trying to receive joy. We're trying to, re but, but God already has a, and I don't want to put God in a system, but it's almost like a systematic way of how he wants to begin to impart something into you and me. He's already, he's already established how that's going to happen. And so he says, but you will receive what? You will receive power when, 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 when what happens? When who? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So this is how it works. You receive Jesus Christ. You receive his spirit. You cannot receive God without receiving his spirit. The difference is that you may have his spirit because you're a born-again Christian. And you can say, I am a born-again believer. And I know that because the Bible says that God has sealed my salvation. And the way he seals that is by his Holy Spirit. So I have the Holy Spirit. But just because you and I know or have the knowledge that we have the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that you're operating or even active in the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you have maybe never experienced anything powerful in your life. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, doesn't make you an evil person. But it does make you a person who lacks everything God's trying to bring to you. Are you hearing me tonight? And so, so he says, and, and you shall receive power, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So the Holy Spirit is in us. The problem that we have is the receiving. We have the Holy Spirit. Our issue is receiving, receiving power. Now, the reason I bring up this message and I, I, I kind of preach this to my, my core leadership, but I, I, I switched it up a little bit for you tonight. But I want you to get this because um, I can honestly say that one of the things that uh, irritated me before coming to Jesus was, you know, Christians that were very religious. Like all, and, and, and listen, and some people still think this way in this world about Christianity, about churches, etc. You know, they, they still think that the only good that Christians or the only impact that Christians can have is that man they can sing good songs you know man they know how to praise God praise the Lord brother praise God they think that they can praise God they can cry they can shout they're they're good neighbors they're kind they're they're whatever and and that's all they see the church as as a church that is really just not able to be workers or be uh, business people or be uh, successful in life or, or to be people that can actually have position in government or to be people that God actually wants to be in the entertainment industry in Hollywood, that, that Christians that actually can, can actually be a part of law and be great attorneys and Christians that can actually be in medicine and so when they see Christianity, they see Christians as, as powerless people. Just, you go do your little church thing because there's no impact. And, and, and the reason God gave us his power wasn't so that we can be cute in church and get goosebumps and, and feel like we're just a, a bunch of emotional people just waiting to feel God. Instead of understanding that we have been endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit to make a difference, not only in our life, but in this world. Amen. And so, 
I think that there's, there's a lack of understanding when we read these verses when he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. I think it stops right there for most of us. We read the verse, but don't, don't, don't know how to apply the power. We don't know how to really embrace the, the true meaning of walking in the power of the Holy Spirit because we, we have yet to learn how to receive. Have you ever asked yourself, God, what do you want me to receive? Because every single one of you have something specific that God is trying to put into your lap, into your hand, into your heart, into your mind. But the problem is that we're so closed off that we cannot receive. Are you here? I'm starting very slow with you. Tell me if you're getting lost, just raise your hand. Okay, good. How many believe that God wants Christians in government? Christians in politics. Huh? Yeah, big time. How about Christians in law? Wouldn't that be amazing? Christians that can actually back up the gospel of Jesus Christ in our country. Christians that can actually stand up for churches. Do you know that, um, that in certain cities, they now put a cap on how many churches can open in a city? Like you have to get permission for the city to say yes or no whether or not you can open a church? What if we had more people that were so passionate because they received the mandate of God of exactly what they were called to do, and then you start making a great impact? Or to be a great business owner that you can actually fund the kingdom and not just survive. Just trying to, I'm just trying to make enough this month to pay the mortgage, the rent, whatever it is that you pay. We're just trying to make it. Does that say power? A little bit different tonight, huh? Doesn't that, doesn't that do something inside you like, what? wait a minute. How can we have the power of God Almighty, the creator of all things on this earth, and not receive whatever it is he has for us? How is that possible? Can we keep going? I mean, think the disciples. The disciples are operating in all kinds of crazy power. And, and you can read that later. Or take notes. If you're a note taker, take it. If you're not a note taker, you're not learning nothing. I promise you you're not. You're not learning. Um, and I can, I've been taking notes since 21 years old when I gave my life to Jesus. I have books and books and books of notes that I've taken and journaling. Please. That's why the Hebrews, Hebrews says, write the vision, make it play. So those who read it, run. But if you've got nothing to read, can I borrow this? If you've got nothing to read... You got nowhere to run. So don't, don't trust your ears and your mind because your mind can be very forgetful. Okay, be a good note taker. So you can go study this later and say, you know what? Man, God's trying to get me to receive something tonight, but I didn't take any notes. I'll go watch live stream. What if we don't put it on? <laughs> then what? Then you missed it. Okay, so the disciples, they're operating in great power and great wisdom. And in Acts chapter 4, verse, th four, verse uh, 13, because you're, you're looking in Acts chapter 1, 8, they all received power. And so something changed inside of them. In every possible, intellectually, something changed. I always have people tell me, did you go to college? And my answer is like, I barely made high school. And they're like, well, how is it that you know so much about so many things? And you know what, I, I can only remember, because I would ask myself that question, like, God, how do I, now I would read the word of God so many um, hours per day and, and per week and just hungry for the word. And, and God just started renewing my, my mind. But I actually found the verse in the Bible, which was in Acts 4, 13. And I realized that when the Pharisees saw these, the Bible says this, he calls them uneducated and untrained men. This is what the Pharisees said. How is it that these uneducated and untrained men can be bold, wise, and powerful? And here's what they end with that sentence. Yet we cannot deny it because we know they've been with Jesus. 
And so when you begin to walk in, in this supernatural power, people will look at you and say, what is it? How, how is it that you can be this person? How is it that you can be this successful as a business owner, as an attorney, as, as I don't know, whatever it is you guys do for a living? How, how can you be so good at what you do? Well, they may say, well, when they hear you say, well, I didn't go to college. But they can't deny that you have Jesus. There must be something to God, to them, that they're going to be like, man, how, how did you do that? Please tell me. The Pharisees. Look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Are you ready? He says, and you shall remember the Lord your God. Who, who, who should you remember? For it is, it is he who gives you what? I'm sorry. Who gives it to you? Okay, so, so it is he who gives you power to get. Uh, now, I know we don't like to talk about money, but now that, now that you read that verse, you're like, oh, my God, yeah, I, want, I want some wealth. How many want to have wealth? No, honestly, how many want to be poor? Let me just ask you that one. Who wants to be broke? How many broke people do we want to have in life? How many want to struggle in life? Just struggle, barely making it to pay your rent, barely making it to pay your car payment, barely making it to buy the groceries that you need for your family. How many want to live a barely life? Okay, so let's read the verse. He says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish your covenant. So, so when, when you walk in God's power, when you learn to receive God's power, you know what happens? It establishes his contract that he made with you and me. A covenant means contract. In other words, God makes a partnership with you and he says, okay, are we in covenant? Yes. Are you born again? Yes. Are you um, understanding that I'm your Lord and Savior? Yes. Okay. We are in covenant. And because of that covenant, he says, God says, well, I better, I better step up my part of the business. And his part of the business is that I have to make sure that, that my power is always working effectively in you. The problem is that we lack to receive what God wants for us for many different reasons. For doubt, unbelief, or I don't like how that's, how, how, how that's uh, uh, said to me. Or, or, or like some of you, maybe one of you or two of you. When I said you get, he wants to give you power to get wealth, some of you just irritated. There's that money thing again. It lacks, it, you, you literally, you zap any reception for God to get something into you. And so he says, I want to give you power to gain wealth. I'm not preaching a message on finances. Don't worry. That's not even the message. I just want you to understand that, that I, I had nothing. <laughs> I come from nothing but God. From zero, I come from nothing. I come from the streets, but Jesus. I don't come from education. I come from edumacation. <laughs> but Jesus, and so He says, and so that He may establish His covenant, which He look at this, which He what swore to your fathers as it is this day. In other words, God says, you know what? I haven't changed my mind about what I want to do with you. This thing is still so, please fix that. Thank you. He, he, he keeps his word. That's why God says, I am not a man that I should lie. I mean, read all the verses. God says, I'm, I'm not a man. I'm not like you. In other words, God says, I keep covenant. Aren't you glad that God never takes away the power that he wants to establish in you? Like, it's available right now. If you've been living 20 years of not doing whatever it is that God has called you to, you can make up tonight that power and say, okay, God, I'm ready. I'm getting it now. For you have given me power to gain wealth. But not just wealth. He gave you power to gain wisdom. Some of you right now, you need to make a decision. Guess what? He gives you power to make the, the wise decision. He gives you power to get a breakthrough. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. He is the helper, but he's not the doer. We have to know that the Holy Spirit needs cooperation from each and every single one of us. Are you here tonight? Okay, so 
And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this, as it is this day. I love that. He'll give you power to get healing. A few weeks ago, and I don't know if the gentleman's here tonight. He was here on Sunday. Uh, not a few weeks ago. It was probably maybe about a month and a half ago. We had an Ignite service just like tonight. And there was a family uh, with the daughters who came to our service and were just broken down, sad, crying. We called them up. We prayed for them. Their father was in the hospital on life support, uh, kidneys failing, liver failing, everything's failing. And he was out for the count. And I remember we as a church, we all prayed together and we believed God for a miracle. We all prayed and we asked God for his power to be manifested in his body. But at the end of the service, God impressed him. He says, go to the hospital. And I rarely do that. Only when I hear from heaven because I, I would exhaust myself. I went to every single hospital. There'd be no way. It'd be a hospital ministry. Someone here is called to hospital. I already did my five years of hospital ministry. I was the chaplain of West Hills Hospital for five years. I've already done that. <laughs> I'm done with that. But when God tells me to do something specific, I'm going to do it. You know why? Because first you have to learn how to receive an ear to hear when he wants you to do something. That Listen, you'll never hear what God wants for your life until you learn how to receive, period. And so God impressed you, said, Mauricio, Go to the hospital. And I was already exhausted that night. I think I just got back from Mexico. I was tired. And I'm like, all right, all right. So I told the girls, I'm like, hey, um, I'll go with you guys. Let's go. And I'm like, really? Okay. And it was already like 11 o'clock at night, midnight. I don't know, some late. And they're like, well, how are you going to get in the hospital? I'm like, we'll, we'll figure it out. And we got in. And I see the father, and he was out. Tubes, everything, just, he looked dead. Just done. And, and I told him, I'm like, here's the deal. I'm like, I get it, you know, and it, these were the exact words, and if they're here, they can quote me. I said, I cannot raise your father from the dead, but there's one, and his name is Jesus, who has power to raise him up, but it starts with, and I brought, took him to Matthew chapter 18, where it says, the Bible says, wherever there is two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them, and if he's there in the midst of us, then guess what's with us? power and so I said so here's the deal I want you guys to lay hands on your daddy and I want you guys to start praying and let's just believe God's word and let's just see power happen we laid hands on him we all prayed and guess what happened <laughs> it was the most amazing thing nothing nothing happened zero nothing and I told him I'm like we walk by faith not by we're not going by what we see we're going by what we prayed. We already did our part. Guess, guess where the, the established covenant is on now? Jesus. Who is it on now? Did, did, did we do our part of the contract? So who has to do his part now? Okay, now don't be that person. But well, how come I did that with it? You can't get into the wise. Wise is the, is the Greek word of confusion. So we left, and we all hugged and everything. This Sunday, I had no idea. I had to, the, the father, the man who was already going home to be with Jesus, was standing up here giving me a big hug on Sunday. And, and, and he, had, he, had been, he's, he doesn't come to this church. He goes to a different church. But how many know I don't care what church you go to? You know, if God puts it something on you, you're going to do it. And he's like, I'm loyal to my pastor. I'm like, man, man you be loyal to your pastor. You go do your thing. You know, but, but what matters is, is that God is just waiting for someone that can receive power. And it's not, the pressure's not on you. The pressure's on him. You just need to show up. And so many of us don't show up. That's all you got to do, show up. Do you know that half the battle is showing up? That's half your battle. Just show up. But I don't know how to do it. You got the Holy Spirit. Let's keep going. And so, you guys, that was, nobody clapped for that guy being alive. That's sad. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I mean, you guys must see this every day or something. Like, yeah, that's, <laughs> we do that on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Praise God, yeah. Yeah, that's normal for us. <laughs> Dang, I need to hang out with you more often. <laughs> Seriously, everyone's like, 
He was dead and now he's alive. <laughs> that was the story. <laughs> you Jesus let me give you an example you know how many have been to the Apple store okay it's it's I love seeing elderly people in the Apple store it's the cutest thing when you see elderly people in the Apple store it's amazing because you know what they're go there and they're like well what and then they start asking a lot of wonderful questions like just and I'm but hey you know what I give them props I'm like you know what I want to be like that when I'm 100 you know, like really, you look, <laughs> you look at them like, I want to be like that because they're elderly and they're still going for it, you know, and I love that because they're, they got their iPads and their iPhones and, but what, and it's the silliest questions, but it's cute because it's, they're like, they want to learn and I love that. But uh, I remember a time where there was this lady who said, my phone is no longer working anymore. And the guy's like, no, stop guys, slow down. <laughs> and he says, uh, he says uh, 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 to the lady, what do you mean your phone's not working anymore? And he says, uh, like, kind of like that phone that's going off right now. <laughs> uh, he says, what do you mean your phone's not working? Well, look. And she pulls her phone out, and she says, look, it's not working. But when, when he opened it, he's like, well, everything's there. She's like, no, um, uh, my phone has glitches. And when I try to make phone calls, it starts, and then it shuts off. And, you know, some of the things that we all go through, how many go through that? And it's just like, man, and you just want to throw the phone, right? And, and he said, ma'am, you, no, there's, there's nothing wrong with your phone. Your phone is fine. But you know what? Let's look a little bit deeper into the situation. Uh, there's this thing called settings. Now you can go, settings. And you go to settings. And he says, and then when you go to settings, then you have to click on the button called general. And when you go on that button, general, you see that little button where it says software update? You always have to check to make sure that the software update is up to date. Because if it's not, then it begins to start glitching and it doesn't function in its, the, in its capacity that it has. And then, of course, once you go to software update, guess what? Look at right there. I, I did mine today in the afternoon. Your software is... You know what happens with so many of us? We are not up to date with what God is doing. We're, we're not up to date. We're still stuck on last year's testimony. We're still stuck on, on maybe two years ago scripture that you got in church. And, and God's saying, hey, listen, I am that I am. And I am always doing something new and so my question to you is when was the last time that you got a power update because maybe right now you're not working and the reason you and I are not working in a specific area in our life is because we are not receiving power amen, amen. and so so you have to ask yourself when was the last time that you actually started looking and studying the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you, who is there to help you in every scenario of life. When was the last time that you actually took time to dig into the scripture and say, I need to get an update inside because all this depression, anxiety, this anger, this rage, it just keeps getting the, I keep, <laughs> right? I keep breaking. I keep, I keep getting, uh, uh, what are some words that phones do? Glitching. I keep, I keep stopping. I keep stalling. I keep breaking. I keep shutting off. And, and all you need is you need to go back to the word of God, which is your settings. Amen. And then you need to go ahead and go to a scriptural called general. Huh? Called general. And then you need to click on that scripture called general and start reading the general scriptures or the general word or the general wisdom that God's trying to give us. And then you know what happens? We go to a software update. So, so maybe just maybe we're shutting off because there's no more update. We only have a salvation Jesus, but we don't have a live out walk with Jesus. And you shall receive power 
when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Does that make sense? Okay, we're almost running out of time. I know we get out at 9, but I'm going to get you guys out earlier. Three keys to God's power quickly. Number one, if you take notes, you're awesome. Number one, you must know your what? Okay. If you're going to begin to walk in God's power, you have to begin to understand what are you called to do. I know that we've heard that terminology, called. How about this? What were you born to do? What were you born to do that you're either doing or that you are not doing? What were you created on earth? Was it just to, just to inhale the, the oxygen of this earth? No. God, God has, I think God is bigger than just creating you just for the purpose of, of just inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling. No, God created you by design. Not by default. But many of us live by default and not by design. We need to start finding out what is my God design so that I stop defaulting in the things that I know that I was never called to do. So then we just start learning to survive. Amen? Okay, so, so what's the purpose? And I'm not, now, now that's good. Now, that's, there's one thing of what I was born to do. For example, I've, I've worked it. I've had a vocation. I have a vocation. I'm a pastor. Okay, I get that. But I had a, a vocation in the world at one point. Okay, I was a district manager. I had many staff. I had millions and billions of dollars of responsibility. That was my vocation. That wasn't my, I was born to do this. That was, that was what I did to make me some monies. And with that, I started expanding the kingdom. My wife and I would sow seed, financial seed to missions without even being missionaries. We'd just give money away. I love that. You know, if you can't be a successful business owner and have a passion to give money away, why are you in business? Why? Why? Because you're either born to just give it all away, right? You're, that's what we're born to do. We're born to give. And so uh, what I'm talking about is not just your vocation because it's within that vocation that begins to develop what I was born to do. And what I was born and created to do is to win souls and make disciples and reach people with the love of Jesus Christ, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So be a lawyer, but serve Jesus. Be in the entertainment industry, but show Jesus. Be in government, but be integrous. You can do all those things, but it's not about the vocation. It's about what you were designed and created to be as God's son and daughter. And you shine his power. There's a big difference now, huh? So don't quit your job to now. I'm going to ministry. No, we need less people in ministry. It always says, oh, Pastor, I'm called a pastor. No, dude, just keep your job. <laughs> Make a difference. This job is not easy. It's, it's tough. It's, it's filled with warfare. You think you have a bad day? I have it every single week. You think you got pressures? I got financial pressures at church, and I got financial pressures at home. I got financial pressures outside of this country. I have people that are depending on Elevate Church to show up every single month. How do you do that? I have received power. To gain what? And so I go to places and say, Mauricio, I have a, 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 these rich people. They're doing a whole walk just to raise more money to help kids that are, that are being uh, human traffic, sex traffic, five-year-old little girl. We just came back from Mexico hearing about little girls being sold for $5. How many here have a little girl? $5. To grown men having sex with them because mom has no money to feed the family. That's the world we live in. That's why we need power. Not to hurt someone. 
but to save these kids' lives. And they're waiting for us to do something. That's why Elevate Church does what it does. Amen? And, and, and so these people said, you know what we'll do? We'll do a walk for you. We're going to invite all of our rich friends, and they're going to just walk. And, and they're not even going to walk. They've been telling me, they're not even going to walk. They're just going to bring checks. <laughs> That's what they said. They're like, they're not going to walk. I'm like, I, I, I don't care if they walk. Just bring the checkbook. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, we'll lie, <laughs> you know, right there. And said, you walked for the sake of a child. Amen. If it's going to be raising money for, man, you did 10 miles. <laughs> awesome. That's great. That's $10 million. <laughs> Praise Jesus. And so when, when you're finally living your design purpose, God, God just, he surrounds you. He, his power draws favor. His power draws favor in your work, uh, favor in your community. He just draws favor. He draws blessing. You don't even have to chase it. It comes after you. If you're just chasing blessings, that ain't God. Why? The only one that we chase is Jesus. You don't have to chase money. So you must know your purpose. Number two, you ready for number two? All wealth, all wisdom, all power. Our breakthrough begins with our substance. Ever say our substance? Okay. So there's a twofold meaning to this. It's interesting that if, if all wealth begins with our substance, when you tithe, that's where the blessing begins. Because you're under God's covering. It's part of his covenant. He says, okay, when you tithe, you stay in relationship with me. When you don't tithe, you're actually robbing me. This is what he says. Read it. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. And he was calling out the people like, why have you robbed me? And they said, we haven't robbed you. Robbed you in what? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse. And so God says, I better break the curse by having them bring a substance and so your substance is what gives you power to gain wealth but but now so that's the that's for the if you're struggling financially i always when i see people just like this broke that broke that do you tithe no moving on okay you already know where, where that where that's going but but the substance i want to talk to you about tonight is this what is your spiritual substance here Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let me show it to you. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the of things, the evidence of things. So think about it. Serving God by my faith is my substance that produces power. It, it's my substance. It's what I have to seek God. The Bible says in Hebrews 11.6 that without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's Hebrews 11.6. So without faith you can't even please God. You know you being here in church tonight, you just please God because it took faith for you to get here. It really did. In all, in all reality, it took faith for you to make a personal decision to say, you know what? I'm going to go to church tonight. I'm going to seek God. You know why it took faith? Because your flesh is always in the way of the Spirit. The flesh is always trying to get you to say, I'm too tired. You know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's Ignite. I don't like Ignite. Uh, they don't even play my jam anyways, you know. And you know how we were fleshly. Pastor's going to receive tithes and offerings again. I'll show up after that. Can we be honest? Huh? I, I don't like that sermon series he's doing right now. We get fleshly. And, and you know what? Now you're just, you're just a man pleaser and you've lost your God pleasing. So when you come to church for the motivation of seeking him, that's faith. So faith is my substance. The only substance God left for you and me on this earth is our faith. Nothing else. So when you bring your tithe, that takes faith. You know why? Because I'm about to get rid of 10% of my income right now. What are you talking about? You know, like what? I can do something with this. God says, I can do more with it. He's like, I'm trying to teach you something. 
See, because the issue with Christians is we say this, God, show me, and I'll believe you. God says, no, believe me, and I'm going to show you. But we have a believing issue because we pick and choose only what we want to believe and not take the whole counsel of God. So number two again, all wealth begins with our substance. What substance? Do you remember when Moses was stuck with all the children of Israel, right, when they're getting out of Egypt? And he's like complaining to God, like, yo, God, why'd you bring us out here, man? Why'd you jack us up? Man, why'd you make me look like a fool? And what did God say to him? What's in your hand? Substance. Yeah, I got a stick. Then you grab that stick and you hit that stick with some authority and power and I will part the Red Seas. And man, you think, you think San Diego had SeaWorld? Oh, can you imagine them walking by and just seeing whales and great why? I mean, they were walking through the Egyptian aquarium. Just think about it. Just. I mean, God gave them a show as they were walking out. Think about it. it uh, or Unless you don't believe this. Did God part the Red Seas? Then what's in the ocean? Everything. So you know there were some whales. And just imagine the kids are like, oh, my God. This is awesome. Because when God shows up, he brings the awe of God in us. And you're like, oh, my God. He got me out of this situation. Dang. Oh, my God. <laughs> Have you ever walked out of court and you know you got that speeding ticket? <laughs> and you were like, God, please don't let the officer show up. I promise you. I, I, that's it. I got I learned my lesson, Lord. I mean it. And the officer does not show up. And you're just like, and they're like, okay, dismiss. You're like, oh, my God. For some of you, it's been a lot of tickets, right? <laughs> and you walk out of there like, ah, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Lord. And, and that's, that's just to give you a parallel feeling, you know what I'm saying, of just the awe of God, like, because you know you didn't have the money to pay. You know you messed up. You know you deserved that ticket. You know you had to pay up. You know the judge should have said, pay it in full. But then God shows up and he says, it's been paid in full. Amen. Number three, last one. All power begins with an idea. We talked about God. God wants us to receive power. Do you think God wants to give you a creative idea to be successful? Yes or no? Do you think God wants to give you a creative idea to be not only successful but to be brilliant and to be intelligent and to be someone that expands his or her influence and, and that God wants to just draw all, all blessings to you. Don't you think that, do you know that it starts with a creative idea? You know, some of you right now, you're wondering, how am I going to get healed? And you're just waiting every Sunday or every Wednesday or at home. And you're just waiting, okay, God, just do it. Just do it. And God's like, son, daughter, I gave you creativity. Can you think for once? Y'all know that Christians have a brain, right? But do you know that the world sees us and they think we're brainless? In other words, they don't think that Christians are intelligent. That ticks me off. It upsets me. It gets me so, ah. God wants to give you power. I remember being 23 years old, and I would have prophets come, and they would say, and son, and the Lord would say, and they would be under the anointing and the power of God, God is going to use you to go into government, and you will be before well-known men. And the favor of God will be upon And I'd sit there like, dude, do you know I went to like six high schools? Like, man, I ditched like half a semester. Like, like be, you know why? Because we have a problem receiving what God sees. Because you're so caught up in what you see in you that you could never receive anything that God has for you. And you're wondering, why am I not moving forward? Why am I not blessed? Why am I not healed? Why am I not stronger? Because you just can't accept what God's trying to say to you. And so when I would get those thoughts and I would be right there and be like, no, I receive it. I receive it, God. And let me tell you something. 
I've gotten prophetic words about government like four or five times within 22 years of salvation. And only within the last year, I have been standing before many government people. And now they want to take me to the Pope. And I don't, I don't need to see the Pope. But I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. The, the, the power of God's word was, and I will take you to the nations. I just didn't know it was going to be 22 years later. Some of you, God's trying to give it to you, but you're still not. I just can't see that in me. I'm just, I'm dumb. You know, I'm not smart. You don't know my mom. And we just, and we just, we just, just, you're living your, your earthly, worldly pedigree when you have royal blood inside of you. And God's trying to do something creative in you. But it starts with a creative what? Idea. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.